You think you know Rhino? Think twice. Rhino has about a thousand plus commands and I started learning Rhino 20 plus years ago. And I can tell you for a fact, there are sections within Rhino I never looked into. And if you just learn one command a day, it will take you more than three years because with every new version of Rhino, there are new commands come in and we should look at those new things because there's lots of cool stuff going on. But because we are creatures of habit, we tend to only use the commands we used when we learned Rhino. And in my case, that's quite a long time ago. I try to overcome that, but it's hard. And, and I'm always super amazed when I learn a new command and I realized, oh my God, that would have saved me so much time in hindsight. Now, one section you might not look very often into is the display modes. Now, I consider myself a bit of a nerd when it comes to display modes. And that's why I will show you today how the display modes and display settings work within Rhino 8. But before we jump in, a new member shout out. All right, hey, we have a new member. Please welcome Nakam Ismail, Dr. Nakam Ismail, to be precise. What I understood, you are a sustainability engineer and a researcher of thermal comfort and thermal building resilience. And you have, an, you have an impressive channel. You have 655 subscribers, two, more than 200 videos. I don't know what that is. It's cra you solve crazy complex problems. Let's check out one of your popular videos here. How to optimize the transportation problem using Lingo. I mean, I don't even know what that means. It's, 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 it's really impressive. Uh, do you need help? I, I think I need help from you. <laughs> Amazing. So... Wow, thank you so much. I mean, what, what should I... I don't even know how to, what to say. Thank you so much for, for supporting me. And I hope, yeah, I can live up to the standard. And if you have any question, if you want to chat with me, just send me a message and, and we can make it happen. All right. Hey, let's jump into Rhino display modes. All right. When you open Rhino 8, it will look like this. Let's make this more pleasant. I'll just create a simple object, super simple. Okay, we are in, in a very ugly, in a quite ugly mode here, the wireframe mode. So this is this. I, if, let's say, I want to go, I want to use the rendered viewport mode. And if I turn on the rendered viewport mode, it looks like this. Let's add here maybe another layer, test. The cool thing is with the rendered viewport mode, it allows you to preview materials and that is quite an advantage but anyway it's it's all very white i mean i can give this another material of course let's just give it i don't know color all right okay that's how it looks like it's a bit a bit boring the shadow is a bit weird now display modes you can access the display modes here this is this is the area where you can adjust your play modes. If you don't have that button, just right click here and then you get this scroll down list and you will find the display modes here, the display modes. It also, it tells you the active viewport, it tells you the what we're looking at and which display mode we are looking at. And you can also change here the display mode. Now you can start to play with whatever is in here, flat shading, doesn't do much. Shadows on and off. Sub D wires. In that case, yes, we want to see the sub D wires. If that would be another object, let's just put a box here, another box. You could also then check if you want to see, for example, here the surface edges. Yes, you can turn that on. And if that would be a mesh, then you can do the same. So this is always the same method. You can turn on and off wires, creases, if you know what creases are, boundaries, curves, lights, lights, interesting. Turn on grid, turn off grid, C plane axis, world icon. Sometimes I don't want to see the grid, but grid is helpful. It gives you sense of scale. All right. So there's a few other things we can look at. There's more to the render settings. These are the general settings and you can set up 
the background here also you want to have a solid image or image file or gradient you could put a gradient that's not so bad i like i like a good gradient you could do that or even four colors i don't know what that i mean this is, i think it's a bit too much yeah but i think that could be quite interesting so you could adjust here the colors something similar maybe like this i actually like the the previous one better maybe not as gray But you can see here's a button, it's called Edit Render Settings, because there's way more to this than these general settings. There is actually here in View and Display Modes, you can adjust all the different display modes as you want. And when it's blue, then it means we adjusted something already. Blue means there's some adjustment going on, which was not there before, which is not the general, the default setting. There's, for example, the grid is shown on here. If I turn it off, that would be the normal mode. And I guess this one, show world axis, was also not on. There's a few other things which normally not on in that mode. So you can, again, adjust all the general settings, but you can also adjust other settings. For example, about the lighting in the scene. And you can also adjust the shadows. So you have a huge amount of options to show uh, different things so for example you could set here the scene lighting to ambient occlusion that didn't change anything weirdly because we can say no lighting that's interesting that changed something we could say default lighting that creates the shadow it's interesting don't like it too much scene lighting interesting but it looks exactly the same as the ambient occlusion lighting it's just slightly different so what's going on here now, I would stay with scene lighting and I'll explain you uh, right away how that works. You can also set up the ambient color. So if I set the ambient color to blue, then it gets a bit of a blue tint, everything. So you can adjust quite a lot of stuff here. So you can adjust, for example, here the points, if how big they are, if they're shown at all, or curves, the thickness of the curves, the color. For surfaces, you can you can adjust the edge settings. If it's an, a naked edge or it's a, a closed edge, then you can adjust the thickness again. Same for sub-D meshes and the lights. Draw lights using light color. The clipping planes. That if you have clipping planes, you can you can show the edges and what color the edges have. So you can do a lot. And here the shadows. Now the shadows are on, but they are grayed out. Weird okay what to do okay we need to turn on the lights so if we click if we right click here we can turn on the lights it gives us something here sunlight that's interesting we also have a sun light and another thing i want to open here is the environments so because that is quite important now the lights here, it says here skylight and it's sunlight. If I turn on the sun, oh, okay, now you can see something. And the sunlight is turned on. So you could just turn on this and you could adjust the color and you can manually control here. But if you want to be more specific with your project location, then you can adjust that accordingly and you can set the, the time of the day and so on or you just use it manually. I like the manual settings quite a lot because you can adjust it for just one, for just one. You can just adjust the settings as you want and then you just leave it as, as you like them best. So that makes a lot of sense. And now we have shadows. We have proper shadows. And then we can go back into the viewport settings. By the way, you can also go to the settings here in properties is the same or you just write properties oh no sorry document properties Pro document properties so that's where we get back to where we were and if we go back to rendered now we can check out the shadows and the shadows now they're not grayed out anymore so oh i forgot something to say about this i use the advanced gpu lighting that means it will use my graphic card to handle the lighting it depends on your graphic card also so if you, you, you can test it a bit if 
on a laptop you will not have a lot of choice but if you have a desktop and you have different graphic cards you can you may be able to swap or switch but yeah just keep that in mind and and that will also determine how much and how great your shadows will look like so you can see here i can if i use the minimum it, here on, on memory it makes it a bit blurry so I, i'll put it a bit up i mean it, you just need to get it go to the point where it doesn't change the quality doesn't change anymore optically you can also adjust the skylight shadow. So there's there's shadow from skylight and there's shadow from sun. I will show you very quickly how that works. You can adjust the soft edge for more soft shadows, edge burning. I don't like that that much. I like it more. I don't like the blurring. It often creates weird artifacts, but you can, you know, test around. If you have a big scene with loads of details, uh, you might you might need to adjust that here as lo a lot. Self self shadowing artifacts trans trans you can also check transparent objects so if you have glass in your scene then you can adjust if that actually creates shadow or not and it will also give opacity to, sh to the shadow so, so basically you can you can simulate as if it would shine through a glass but still cast some shadow and the last setting here is the camera based clipping bubble this is when you have a large huge scenes like city scale and you want to limit the area of where the sh where it casts a shadow you need to do that when you have when your computer struggles then especially when then the shadows create some artifacts then you would start to use this bubble in my case i don't need to use that at the moment and i can just click here okay now if i go back to the to my light i can see that there there's i can adjust the intensity so if i want to have more sunlight i can increase that or i want to have less skylight or more skylight then i can adjust that that means the ambient light is much brighter and i go back to the to the original version here now what else could we do in order to make this more interesting oh yeah so one thing is really a bit annoying is that if I move my object you can see that the shadow moves along and this is because of the of the ground plane this infinity ground plane which is given by Rhino now you can turn it off and on and you can adjust it further so I can if I type here ground plane you get to this interface where you can first of all show in an underside that's that's cool. If I don't have that, then there's no shadow. This is, I think this is quite useful as first. And then the height above world X, Y. So I'm always a bit annoyed if I, especially when I work in, in Ladybug and I have to turn off some object and suddenly my ground plane jumps up and down or, or jumps to a position which and then suddenly hides everything. It's because it doesn't react to grasshopper objects. That's a bit... It's a bit annoying so you can set that to a fixed position so if i set if i go here to to a fixed number then i can set it to zero and it, it's not moving anymore so i can it, it as if my ground plane is on zero that's it i think this is just so much better so this is one thing you can do and let's check out the materials I I really like to use like a custom material here or you can try any of these glass but I like to adjust it directly on the screen I make a new one just to be sure okay let's call this display material now here we can first of all adjust the color let's give it a nice color I like I like this color this could be quite nice okay and then we can adjust the gloss and reflectivity it's just so much nicer suddenly <laughs> it's just a little bit of it's just a little tweak and you can adjust more you can adjust the transparency if you need that sometimes it's quite good reflection polish you can make it more rougher or more polished transparency clarity doesn't change much self-illuminating 
and you you can adjust the refraction so if you know your material then you can also change the refraction now it looks like a balloon all right so no what else as you can see here in the in the reflection you see these skylights and you can find that actually here in the in the environment now the background image is the basic is the rhino studio 8 now this texture is a high dynamic range texture i mean you can you if you know if you know what that means a high dynamic range texture you could load your own environmental textures so if this would be the next step a bit more advanced so if you want to have different reflections then you can load your own dynamic range images as an environment so for example you can add a basic environment and then tweak your environment but that's for another video i think that's what I wanted to show you and how you can improve your display mode. And yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot. One thing I forgot. So, hey, by the way, we can go out here and you can compare what you had before and what you have now is how the, the difference, the difference. Let's check out the difference. So here we can go into also into perspective mode and we can go to rendered all right so let's go back to our render settings now the cool thing is you can save your setting and have multiple versions of th of these so if we can so we, we can take this and go into here and copy all right and you can oops and you can change that amazing beauty display okay so now I can go here and say, I want to choose here display mode, beauty display, and here we choose rendered. And I can go to render settings, the render settings, and restore the defaults. So now you have it. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's because I made a lot of adjustments to, sorry, to the light. Now if I take this and, oops, and copy, there is quite a difference. All right, that's it. See you in the next video. All right, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to become a member and you want to support the channel, please check out the member section and, and the link in the show notes. All right, see you in the next video. Ciao.